Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello, and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Dr. Gabrielle Merwin, and she helps people who want to take full control of their communication so that they can capture the attention of their audience right away. Uh, Dr. Merwin, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. It's a delight to be here. It's been also very interesting working with you personally, so you're going to have to be my best uh, advertisement. <laughs> That's right. We <laughs> have had uh, a few se- uh, sessions where uh, you've really helped me connect with uh, the voice, and that's what we really want to talk about today, is uh, the voice and how important of an int- uh, 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 instrument it is in communication. Uh, but before we get into that, give us a, a little bit of uh, your background, background Gabrielle. Uh, you are an opera singer. Uh, take us back to how you got started with that. <laughs> Well, I didn't even really start in opera. I actually started as a ballet dancer. So my first work was was very, very physical and, and personal knowledge of the body and the importance of even the smallest move, the difference that it'll make. And um, I was singing also, but sort of as a second career. And also because, of, well, you know, I come from a Welsh background, so my mother was singing songs to me from the very beginning. And, uh, and I began to sing back. It was so natural to sing, I didn't even think about it. And um, then I was asked to become professional at about eight years old. I started working in a Shakespeare theater with early music singing, and I was a Mozart singer. And um, went on with that for quite some time until uh, I learned a new way, a technique of breathing, a whole bunch of things. And that brought me a voice that I never expected, which was a a full-blown Wagnerian voice that came when I was 22 years old and healthily. And I, I won't give my age now, but let's say that I've had some time with it and my voice is still clear and clean. And I realized that I had been given a, an extraordinary technique that we also use on stage with actors and a whole bunch of different people. And that there was a whole group of people that had no access to true voice use and true voice care and bringing out the deepest part of them that our, our real voice our real vocal resonance tells people who we truly are. That's what mm. people really hear when we speak. And so I decided it's time for me to put myself at service of the top level, really serious people about what they're doing, who would have no access to even the knowledge that their voice was making the difference when they were speaking to people. So for- that's the short version. <laughs> mm. Well, well, obviously, if you've gone through that path, you've had all different kinds of voice coaches and uh, you, you really use your voice uh, and people go to hear your voice when you're singing. But there's a lot of other people that aren't opera singers that really need to use uh, their voice uh, on a day-to-day basis. You know, myself, I interview people all the time. So voice is uh, very important for me. But uh, there's also salespeople, you know, where it is truly the most important because, you know, they make things happen in the world. So, you know, is that the kind of person, a salesperson or an entrepreneur that you really want to get hold of and let them know how that they can use their voice better to communicate? That's, that's a wonderful question and, and actually an unexpected one for many people. And yes, Absolutely. I think in the times that we live in now with internet and the possibility for one simple person to touch so many, it's actually the top entrepreneurs and creators and idea creators who are changing this world. They really have this world in their hands because as much as there can be one big person on the top saying this, that with an army or without it, the real change happens from what people hear themselves in themselves and what they communicate between them. And that's what the entrepreneurs do including salespeople. I mean, you know, there was something that I thought was wonderful. It shocked me when I heard it for the first time. And then I realized, my God, they're really right on it, which is how you handle money is how you handle love. Mm. Oh, no, no, couldn't be that. And in fact, it's really how we receive what we do with what we receive and the quality of what we give back out again. 
And that's what salespeople do. So if you have somebody who's, who's there who really wants to get something that will be fine and good for the life of somebody into their hands, then if they really believe in what they're selling and that their own product, they need their voice to say it for them first, that they're, they're true about what they're doing. And if they don't believe in it, they shouldn't be selling it. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm in very direct Aries type. <laughs> so, that, and, uh, that is completely true. Uh, and I think you can feel that if somebody believes in the product or the service that they're offering, there's a certain passion that's going to come through. But, you know, not everybody has the voice to go with that passion, maybe. Uh, what kind of problems do you see? And of course, there's, there's salespeople that really make the world go round, I think. But then you've also got the professional speakers uh, and coaches and consultants that really need to you know, share their message and get their message across. But what do you see is the main problem that people have with their voice? Hmm. It's, it's interesting. I wouldn't put them in separate categories. I think they're all different facets of the same jewel, really. Um, a, a consultant also bring somebody aware of what they need and how to get it. And a salesperson is bringing somebody something to them that they may not even have been aware that they needed, but when they see it, they understand, yes, at its best. <laughs> we all know uh, shiny object syndrome as well, but even that speaks of something that we need to do, which is delight. We were born to be happy on this earth and to have fun. So that's, that question becomes extremely important I have seen some wonderful people selling things or, or teaching on television or on television tablets, how they are, on the computer, um, who are interesting, who are beautiful, who move well, but their voice, I have to turn the volume down. I can't listen to them. And so obviously their message is not going to come across. And if you're in the profession of consulting or of coaching somebody, then you're working with the most vulnerable and delicate parts of people and your voice needs to be your true you so they can open their true them to you and both of you can work together at the best level. It's sort of like if, if I can take it back to opera for a second, when you're on stage and you're singing, if there's one person who sings really, really truly, everyone else comes back into tune. So it's, <laughs> this is really what I want to teach people is to come into the most resonant voice that they have. So whatever they do in their professional work and also at home, they're working from their most centered and connected point of power and they're bringing what's truest of them into the world. And it means that what they do will work. When somebody walks into, if you're, you know, when we get out of COVID and we're, doing meetings again, and someone walks into the room in the first, really in the first 30 seconds, people go on or off with your first word. If your body doesn't convince them, your voice immediately can take their attention. So this is really the central point of communication between people, more than is recognized now. And you doing podcasts, you're one of the first to know about that. <laughs> Right. There's, there's a lot said uh, in the, the entrepreneurial industry, uh, first about audio quality. You know, people want to hear good audio, so audio quality is very important. But uh, the first audio really is the voice. You know, if you have the best audio uh, technical material, but you don't have a good quality voice, then, then you're really going to be struggling right from the start. Can, can I take a particular point? You know, you, you've talked about a good voice, but it's, that's not really the question. The question is the trueness of your voice, the trueness of the resonance of what you are saying, first of all, to yourself, obviously, and obviously outside of yourself. Uh, it, you know, Armstrong is the perfect example of it, or Edith Piaf. Mm. You, you wouldn't say they're the most, you know, uh, velvet voices, but they're some of the most best people in the world for the quality of the true resonance of what they were communicating. And so let's talk, let's talk about work. that for a minute because the, the true resonance is uh, where we want to get to. But what exactly is that and what makes uh, people like Armstrong and Piaf really connect uh, with people that they fall in love with them? Huh. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful question to ask and it, it could take hours and hours and hours to do all the response to it. 
the simple one is that we are basically energy and we're connected with energy coming through us. If we disconnect from that energy, we can't communicate who we are, our form, our thoughts, our creations. So the moment, on the other hand, that someone is really connected into, first of all, themselves, and then the physical instrument that they were given, whichever it might be, that physical interest instrument will speak who you are at your most beautiful and at your most powerful because you're really connected. And that means that whatever you say will come across. You, you can think of there, there's some very many examples of, of people also, in a sense, you don't even care what they say. You just want to hear them speak. Richard Burton was one, or Dylan Thomas, when he was speaking, you just, you know, he does the most complex use of English sometimes that I've ever heard, but it comes across because that voice is saying the real message. And to give the power and the control of that into people's hands, I also think will resonate on a much larger level in this whole world, because in order to do that, you have to be truthful with yourself. And that's where intelligent living comes from. Mm. And if I may be so blunt, that's where the bullshit goes out the window because nobody has time or interest for it. Right. So the, the point of having that resonant voice is so that you can connect to people, uh, that you can control uh, an audience, whether you're a speaker or even if you are on the phone and, and you're, you're making calls as a, as a business person or as a salesperson. Um, but what is it that really, you know, the core of the voice that uh, we want to get to. Uh, a lot is talked about the tonality uh, that people have. How is that different than uh, the, the resonant voice? Um, it's, it's not that it's different, it's that it's the second step. The, the first is, is connecting the body to your voice and really controlling your energy use. I, I wanted to, to change just a little bit your wording. It's not really to control an audience. It's to control what you're doing that's so true in itself that the audience responds, which is really a different vision. And there, in, in a sense, ironically, you have full control. So what does that mean physically simply? Um, it means that when you learn how to use the instrument that you are to communicate your thoughts, your feelings, your goals, whatever it might be, you want to put yourself at your top level. It's like you don't want to take a saxophone and beat it up and then play on it afterwards. If you take up a violin, you want to use a violin with the best of bow so that it does the why it was created for. And that means physically learning the use of your body, of your voice, specifically how to take care of it so that you keep your instrument of who you are in its best uh, state possible, mm -hmm. then you can learn how to play that instrument best. That's what you were talking about with controlling the room or on a telephone call. But first of all, you need to know what your particular and unique form of instrument is. And this is the second part of this work, which is you will come out with your uniqueness obvious, no matter what you do. Even if you wear the same suits as everyone else, mm -hmm. when you walk in a room, people will turn their heads. Well, I, I know people get uh, attracted to that authenticity. Uh, you know, people will follow people that they believe are authentic and have a passion uh, for what it is that they're doing. Is that where we want to get to? That, uh, yes, it's part of it. In, again, not even on a level of believing, it's something that they recognize. Ah, oh, this is someone in their power who's owning. So whatever they have to say is going to be interesting, and I want to know. And someone, as I was talking about on stage, who, who's feeling a little bit off or not so sure, will gravitate towards someone who is coming from their true heart and from their true voice because they know that's where they'll find their own. Mm. So I, I guess the people, big question is... These are big questions, in fact, actually. How, how do we get to that uh, true self uh, and, and that well, true authenticity? <laughs> you, know, you know, our bodies, ourselves, are made from intelligence and are about intelligence. So we don't have to do it all with a big D. What we have to do is to intelligently use the simple things that we have at our disposal and that are natural 
to our body to let the instrument that we are vibrate the glory that you are. That's really what it's about. And that means learning some, some simple things about how to move your body, how not to, to come back into alignment. And this allows the voice to come out at its truest before you can even think about it. You know, we don't have time to think about, I'm going to do this word or this note. It, it's, the time's already by. It's really coming into the knowledge of who you are and the absolute trust of that. And then you can dance and then you can move as you want to and have a wonderful time. Mm. And again, that's what we're here for. So we have worked together for a couple of sessions and you gave me just a, a few tips to you know, help that voice come out uh, a little bit uh, clearer and, and stronger. Uh, what could you share with the audience that you know, they could think about to really help uh, clear up that voice and, and get to that inner resonance? Well, absolutely. There is very deep work that's very fine work, but there's some good basics here. The first thing that I would say to people when they're speaking on the phone or coming into a room is to take about three seconds before and really connect to their feet, oddly enough, and feel them connected to the energy coming up through their bodies and let it flow. These are these are sort of vague words, but the moment that you apply them, your body knows what to do with them and how to translate that into physical connection. So it's very important, for instance, if someone's working on the computer all day, talking to the computer, make sure that you have your feet flat on the ground. Make sure that you drink enough water. That's your oil, like the oil in a car that makes the motor work. And um, remember, though the sound passes through your vocal cords and your mouth, resonance doesn't happen there. Resonance happens going through and out. And it makes the difference with this kind of sound or this kind of sound. And this is how the great actors could whisper, but it would come at the back of a great hall mm. because they were in the resonance, not trying to manipulate the sound. So for someone who, you know, is going, this is the first time I've heard all this stuff. What is she, what is she talking about? The very simple thing to do is, again, make sure that your feet are well on the ground and see if you can really feel that connection and make sure that your body is held as you know great grandmothers used to say sit up straight there's a reason for that um one is you give your lung space you give all your organ space to work and you hold your body up with the right place which is your lower spine many many people walk around holding themselves up with their stomach or with their shoulders and it's time for all those places to go on vacation and come back to their mm. real placement in the body, which will free up the voice because it, it has tiny, tiny, tiny muscles. They're, I mean, they're so, there's, some of them are as big as a human hair. That's it. And they can sing Wagner for five hours. So you want to give them all the support that you can, which means not putting a lot of tension on them. And the other thing I would suggest there's a specific breathing for voice use, which we went into. But before anybody speaks, if they don't have the time to go into that specific technique, make sure you do two or three good breaths right in your behind so that you really get your uh, shoulders and all the things around your voice relaxed. You should be breathing deeply and never, never in the high part of you. That's where we breathe when we panic, when we're, in, we're frightened. Mm. So those two things, very, which aren't really about the voice, will help the voice immensely. Your feet on the ground, and before you speak, <clears throat> really, sorry, I've been playing with dust bunnies moving for the last two weeks, so I've got some, I've got some dust in my voice. Um, to get that low, deep breath and really let your body come back to what it was created to be. And you will see your voice will come out much more easily, and you'll be much more comfortable. Mm. A, a little tip that we worked on is to make sure that your, your chin never comes up. If you really want some sound to come through, let it roll through you instead of the effort of pushing it out there. You can't go too long on that. Mm. And you can trust that when you're connected in your energy, your voice is powerful, much more so than if you push it. 
Well, I, I was shocked at just how big of a difference uh, some little changes made to, you know, the power of the voice being able to come out and just knowing that was, you know, a, a huge help. But I, I want to talk to uh, a concern that a lot of people have. Uh, public speaking is, you know, you know one of the, the greatest fears uh, people have, uh, as well as, you know, sales calls. A lot of business owners know that they need to get in front of people, but they are scared to get on the phone. Uh, how are you able to get by that, you know, either nervous energy or fear uh, by connecting with that resonance? It actually, you just gave the answer. <laughs> but, um, the truth, the truth is to make the difference between two things. I think many people are taught that they need to disconnect from themselves and manipulate the situation. And of course, they go into panic because you can never win, and that's in that position. And it takes a lot of energy. And you know, most people, when you go on stage, they're only maybe two days out of the 365 that you're at your very best, and what are you going to do with the rest of them, you know, the other 300 plus? So the real answer to that question is, when you, the more you come into your resonance, the more you don't have to worry about it. You realize stage fright, for instance, when I finally realized this made a much, 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 much easier life, it wasn't that I was scared. It's that when you step on stage, you get the impact of the energy of everybody sending their energy and looking at you to take that in and do something with it and send it back to them. So it's more like if anybody out there has ever played baseball, it's more you've got to be ready for the ball that's going to come and catch it and send it back. It's not about fear at all. And um, when you're doing a call, the misconception, I'm going to just jump for a second, the misconception, the misconception that most people have is that the voice doesn't matter. But actually the voice is everything. If you have taken control of your own relationship with your own voice, then no matter what you say, will come across. And certainly much better than trying to do something to make it happen. Because we all know in our skins what's really going on. So manipulation has no part. And the moment that one lets that drop and starts coming from your true self and your connection with it, I, I think people will be utterly surprised. Now, anyone that's already gone on stage several times with the public speaking knows that there's something that happens where suddenly you're, you're in the flow, you're in the groove. And in fact, it is that, very simply. Mm. One lets go of, I have to do this to, I own who I am. This is what I want to bring to them. And I receive them. I receive, as many people that do very deep work in, they have all commented the part that we all have the hardest problem with is receiving. And the moment that you're in a good relationship with your own voice, you know what you're doing, you know physically what you're doing. You know, we all have a couple tips that we can use when we get distracted or something seems to go wrong. That's just useful technique to have. But when you're really in connection with your, your voice, anything you say and everything you do will be the right thing. Because you're really... Well, you're in the groove, as they used to say many years ago when I was young and charming. So um, that's the true answer. And you yourself gave the answer as you were asking the question. Mm. Now, do you find with the, the people that you talk to don't really ever think about the quality of their voice and how it affects them in their lives? No, it, it's, I, I find that people know that they should, but they don't know how to think about it in a way that makes them feel powerful not only feel, feel power, but be powerful. It's more become something like I should, but oh, geez, I don't want to go there. You know? <laughs> and of course, that doesn't help anything at all. Um, because they, your, your voice is your birthright. And the uniqueness of your voice is your birthright. And also your dovere, your, um, your duty to own and take care of. It's one of the greatest instruments that you've been given to make your life. Mm. So, uh, unfortunately, most people tend to think of it and, and either they shrug it off because they've given up thinking they have any choice or they, they wince because they think they have no choice. And both of those responses is, is 
total and absolute bullshit. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have choice, it is. it was one of the greatest gifts given to you. And how about using it and enjoying it? That's right. It's something unique to you. Uh, yes. And it's a, a gift, like you said, that uh, should be used and controlled as much as possible to uh, share your message. And I believe everybody has a message to share. Absolutely. Um, so the, the, the more passionate uh, and resonant you can be with sharing that message, obviously, the more power that you're going to have in uh, either in a sales situation or whatever situation uh, to convince people that uh, you are the person to listen to and the authority and the expert, which is what I do, uh, is a lot <laughs> of, you know, the authority <laughs> and the expert, you having the voice to go with uh, what you say, obviously, is extremely important. Well, be just simply because we're talking about the truth of things. Mm. I mean, this is how it works. This is what works. And why would you want to go play around in something that doesn't work? There's no fun in that. So let's talk about what holds people back. Uh, there, uh, there's ob obviously <laughs> uh, knowing that you have a voice, everybody knows that they have a voice, but knowing how to use it and being aware of that is one problem. But, you know, what holds people back from getting the help uh, from people like uh, somebody like yourself uh, to really make the improvements that are going to make a huge difference? I, I think we were starting to touch on that just before. Usually, this comes into the very into very deep things with people. It's it's first experiences with how they were received, and their own voices were received in the family. So you know, there's all sorts of stuff that comes up. There's jealousies. There's there's all sorts of things that some some people know that their voice counts because they heard that and they lived that when they were very young. But in many many situations. People are taught to manipulate themselves instead of own their voice and the responsibility that goes with it, which means the freedom that goes with it. It's the same word. Freedom and responsibility is the same stuff. So <laughs> what happens is that people have often, I've found, old memories of someone saying, oh, God, would you please shut up? Or, mm -hmm. no, don't sing. And uh, I've had a couple of, just recently, a couple of incidences where someone says, oh, God, I'm such, oh, no, I could never sing. And they started to sing. It was a beautiful voice. But it was all to do with the self-perception. And one of the things that's useful about going for the resonance in the voice is that you yourself can feel when you're in the middle of your true resonance. And that means that whatever else someone else is projecting onto you doesn't stick. You think about 30,000 volts going through something. It just throws off anything else that's coming that wants to interfere. The mm. moment that you're connected to that immense, immense energy and power that we all have, it won't matter. You can, he you can heal up, which is basically dissolving and getting rid of all the things that people, there are many, many people that have heard in one way or another, spoken, sometimes unspoken, messages that their own voice is something to avoid and instead i'd like to see people coming back into relationship with their own voice because your own voice has things to tell you that are really important not only for you but for the whole world mm. uh, i'm sure there's a, a whole lot you could talk about uh the, the psychological side of things and you know mm. where a person is in the family and their upbringing just Absolutely. like you were saying there but is, is that a reason that a lot of people don't like their own voice, do you think? <laughs> I, I love that you asked that, Neil. Um, I still wince when I hear myself speak. <laughs> so, so I'm afraid, I mean, most singers do. If you, if you have, we're all shy people actually underneath it, which I'm sure you don't believe, but it's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the moment that I hear someone speaking from their true voice I instantly sit up and pay attention and that's not just because it's my profession one of the reasons I went into this profession I had others available was because I saw the immense good it can do so uh, this is very Welsh of me going in, in a, a spiral to come back to the, the central question which I totally <laughs> own um, 
when people wince at their own voices, they're not wincing at their voice. They're wincing at the part that they've allowed to be false in their own voice to themselves. And the moment that you can give people some very simple things just to own the physical voice again, a lot of that stuff just melts and goes off because you realize it's nonsense. And what I see this process doing for so many people, it's sort of like it, it takes them out into the light in front of a mirror and they see who they are, they, who they truly are. And they see the various bits of rags and tatters and clothes and stinky things, you know, that they might have picked up along the way, but they didn't notice because they weren't looking in a true mirror. And then they can just take them off and start clothing themselves correctly, not like the emperor, not truly. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's uh, a lot of people that would love to be able to do video. Uh, there's a lot of people that would love to be able to do podcasts, but are you know scared to get going because of some of those issues that they might have with their own voice. Uh, uh, so talk to simple. me. Talk to me. Talk to me a little bit more about your process and how you help people overcome these things and really be able to connect with themselves. Thank you. Yes. Well, the the basic thing is that it's simple. That's what nobody ever says, you know. It has to be the right simple, as with anything. And that's where a coach or a consultant comes in, is to help save your time that you don't go through, you know, 35,000 simples until you get to the real one. So um, it's what you're doing, in a sense, on the podcast. You help each person come, come to their true message as well. Um, but the actual physical process is, is, is quite simple. As you noticed, we, we began with that and that's why it works so well because we're working with the body and with the intelligence that's natural to us not trying to impose something else on top of it any great sports person knows this already you can't go against your body you have to go into your body and then bring it into its top level mm, definitely you know the the place that I found uh, peace and, you know, was my, myself with the, the, the energy that was flowing through me was always on the soccer field. Uh, you <laughs> know, I grew up in Scotland playing football uh, and that's where I was at home. So yeah, how, how do I connect my voice to th that being of, you know, just being in my natural element there? Well, if, even let's go back to sports as an example. So if you, you feel good and you feel happy when you're, when you're playing soccer or, or football, as we call it here, calcio. Um, but if your body's off somewhere, if you haven't taken care of it, you can't follow through that, that movement that's natural to you. So what I do with people is I give them back their body's best movement and their voice's best movement so they can go have fun with it in whatever they like to do. But it's very hard to be a soccer player if you, you're not even allowing yourself to learn how to run or walk. But as soon as you learn how to run or walk, then it's really fun. So we're, we're at really some of the most basic, just bringing people back into what is their natural process for voice use, which of course gets easier and easier because the body, you're not trying to enforce something on the body. The body goes, oh yeah, I know what to do there and starts taking over. And one of the things that, that made for the reason that I stayed with the teacher that I stayed that taught me the most of this technique was that in the first 10 minutes, she had already changed my voice. In the first month, I had taken leaps that with other teachers wasn't happening with two and three years worth of work. Mm. And that's why I love to teach this with people because they get results quickly. And we all need that. And let's so keep our courage up. So how do people feel when they've worked with you, Gabrielle? Um, <laughs> you know, they come to you uh, not maybe knowing too much about the voice uh, and you take them through the process to really let them connect. What does that mean to them? Well, obviously I can't speak for them. That's their own unique voice that needs to come out. But the comments that I've had mostly is, oh, I didn't know it. Oh, oh. That was quick. Oh, <laughs> it's usually they sort of look for words often about how to say it. The, the response that I've had is, but I've seen this happen thousands and thousands of times with this technique, is people start coming into connection with their own power. 
much more quickly. And so the, what this seems to do for people is help them and their bodies to remember who they truly are and the fun of that and the power of it. And that makes clearly clear whatever one's doing that wasn't helping. So mm-hmm. I, I see people transform very quickly and, and it's just a joy. It's, it's just so much fun to watch people come into their own, oh my God, I can. It's wonderful. <laughs> so. Well, it's so attractive as well. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's you know, wh- wh- from, from uh, a dating or mating point of view, we are connected to that energy. We're attracted to it. And from a sales perspective as well, you know, we are attracted to that as well. When you know somebody is in the resonant self and that energy is just emitting, it really attracts people to you, which is, you know, what all entrepreneurs want so that they can share uh, that message that they have. Well, it's, it's, it's the real swi- switch from what we were talking about before, which you're describing, you know. It's the switch from thinking, oh, God, I've got to manipulate this to make it work. Two, I have to be myself and own what I'm doing, completely own, be responsible for everything, and enjoy what that happen, what that makes happen in the world. Hmm. It's, a complete, it's a completely different mindset. I, and look, you know, I'm, I'm very female, and I've been attracted to, to men who you would say are, are officially ugly, but absolutely taken by them because they're owning their power. They're owning their masculine power and they're owning their power as a human being, which is the first one, which it's the only one that makes the masculine or feminine work. Mm. And, you know, you're talking about dating, which is why it's bringing this up. And also the pleasure of being in front of someone like that because it makes the true resonance in me respond. Like, you know, the good singer on stage who brings everyone back into tune. And that's such a, a, such a wonderful process. It's a sort of form of making love, actually. Mm. <laughs> well, it is uh, really fascinating when you look into it. And like I said, there's a lot of people that uh, aren't really aware that their voice can be such a powerful tool uh, mm-hmm. and that they need help to really reach that resonance that we've been talking about. And uh, Dr. Gabrielle, if people want to reach out to you uh, mm-hmm. to get help with their voice, you know, what is the best way for them to do that? Well, we're just in the process right now of, of putting up um, a site on the Facebook page and all the obvious ones. The simplest way would be to write me an email, and the email address is the Merwin. Method and Merwin is M E R W I N method M E T H O D. I'll spell that out again. The Merwin method, so the you know already, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And M E R W I N M E T H O D at Proton Mail. It's P R O T O N M I E L dot com the merwin method at, at protonmail.com excellent and i'll get back to you we have a couple of different packages and possibilities um i have a first a first possibility for a really in-depth work with an analysis of the voice what can be done and some very personalized unique exercises for the person that i'm offering at 197 right now that'll go up later but for the moment to start with And we can discuss anything else from there. There are a couple of other packages available. Excellent. Well, it certainly made a a big difference to me just to to realize that there's simple little changes that I can make that can make a a big difference. It was extremely helpful, and I I am eternally grateful to you for that. Uh, Dr. Gabrielle, I have really enjoyed our conversation today. Uh, Thank you very much for being my guest on the Trust Factor Radio. It it has been an honor and it's been a pleasure working with you and may you go forward. And by the way, the gratitude should be for my teacher and all the various teachers that have given me this knowledge. It's a pleasure to bring it to you, but it's not myself that makes it. It's myself that makes the particular mix that I've seen really works for people. And I hope it will work for you some more and for anyone else that wants to find the true resonance of their voice on all levels, because that's what you deserve. And you were born to do that, and you have work to do in this world. So, you know, get on it. (laughs) There it is. Excellent. Well, 
<laughs> Dr. Gabriel Merwin, thank you very much for being my guest. And if you're listening, make sure you reach out to Dr. Gabriel. Her email will be in the show notes below, but it is uh, the Merwin method at protein at protonmail.com. And if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we will see you next time on the show. Thanks so much. Ciao, bello. Ciao. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.